What's up, Internet? My name's Nerdy. And I'm Clever. And this is Interview with a Vampire, Episode 2. I was writing it last week, and I kept being like, is it with the vampire? With a vampire? <laughs> what is, wh who is the interview with? Oh, I actually, I thought it was a vampire. It is a vampire. But it says interview with the vampire on here. I Googled it, and it said, wait, 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 wait. Maybe that's how they differentiated the movie with the TV show. I don't think so. Because I thought it was... Interview with, with the vampire. Oopsie. Well, I need to change the title of a YouTube video. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, welcome in. I, I'm so derailed. What I'm were we talking so about? I'm so sorry. We're about to react here to episode two of Interview with the Vanti Va Vampire. <laughs> the Vampire? The Vampire. To make it worse, episode two is titled After the Phantoms of Your Former Self. Because chapter two, I guess, was too simple. Too simple. We don't go halfway here. We go full ass. Welcome to episode After the Phantoms of Your Former Self. If you want the full length reaction, go over to patreon.com slash nerdy nightly, mm -hmm. where you can watch that. And for now, let's just get into this because last week was shocking as heck. And I need to know where they go from there. Marius de Romanus. Never heard of him. Marius de Romanus. Poir du Lac will join you at course seven. I don't know how someone can eat seven full courses. They're very small. If you've ever been to like a real fancy French restaurant, you get like no, no, never a walnut that's been like cooked in a special sauce as a course. <laughs> a walnut. Here, we're gonna feed you, but we're gonna make it real hard. Can we turn down the music? I was just thinking the same thing. We live off the blood of the living. Lap up the blood of the deceased and it'll suck you right down into death along with your victim. Where's the line between those two? Yeah. What's the expiration? Three minutes? Ten minutes? Maybe it's like when the heart stops beating. Maybe. Because if you're sucking it out of a living person, the blood like still beats. I miss doing ecstasy. <laughs> this poor guy. <laughs> Sugar. Sugar. You're asleep. Whenever you're ready, Louis. <laughs> <laughs> Ali! We're vampires? Yeah, how? Oh! oh! <laughs> you don't bite the blood, you suck it. Whoa! The life of a vampire has its challenges. A little heads up would have been nice. Yeah, you know. It'd be good to know. You can be on top. Okay. Mm it's not cheating with a woman because I can't get pregnant. It's not cheating with a woman because I can't get pregnant. The architects of our creation mean to humble us. Yes, you're so humble. <laughs> you chase after phantoms of your former self. Hey! Zip zip title, look at that. <laughs> Take your overdressed self and have a fun time. <laughs> Just like a tweed suit. Is that? I <laughs> like in a tux. You can tell by the look on your face. Only twins. You a fool, Dr. No. It's a little suspicious. But ask only if you call it a pocket. What are you calling it? Fire escape. Half queer, mostly queer. What is it? Non discriminating. I don't like sleeping angry. What? Huh? I can't hear you. <laughs> Did you say something? Why don't you just get like a double wide? Maybe they don't make coffins in double wide. In the essential duties of the executor in charge. That suit though. Yeah, that's great. The gold chain sends out in the perfect way on that red. Mm -hmm. It's really nice. 
He's the quiet one, this one. The other two, the twins, Lord help us. I love how much that scene reminded me of the Elrond Durin scene from episode two of Rings of Power. <laughs> Where you been? I had two, I had three kids. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Got married. 20 years. Dude, <clears throat> do not eat your newborn nephew. Yeah, no, don't do that. That's not good. I'm sure Mama would love to see it. <laughs> okay. Never having kids. Hell yeah. Let's go. Uh, hopefully my mom doesn't watch this one. <laughs> Let's take a holiday. What about Rome? Oh. Rome. Rome, Italy. Would you prefer Rome, Wisconsin? <laughs> he had a way about him. Those first years, let's die. Preternaturally charming. Occasionally thoughtful. Occasionally. I don't understand the saran wrap on the stone table. Just wipe it off. It's so wasteful. And music. <laughs> he would be the nerd that brings the score to the frickin' opera. He probably has the original score. The handwritten notes. To be kind, he did not live in the soprano's vocal stratosphere. There was one problem. There's we hated the one guy. There's on stage. such judgmental gaze. Like And Lestat was unamused. Is Lestat going to take over the performance? <laughs> and finish? I understand they're a road company, but are they pulling talent from roadside gas stations? God. <laughs> it's like they're watching <laughs> Wicked and they're like. He's so dramatic. Yeah. To be fair, I've seen some touring shows where I've had the same experience. Where I'm like, how? Sure. How that person? I've seen some people on Broadway who I was like, really? He said that, Come over so I can teach you the music. And you could see all the doubts the young man had about his art, about himself. <laughs> this is my worst nightmare. Literally. Qui? E qui? E dove è la tua voce? We would drain the tenor for hours that night. We would drain the tenor for hours that night was... The name of a threesome I had in college. Half of her eyebrow was blonde, like a mutt. I wouldn't describe my wife in any way by saying, like a mutt. Yeah. You're welcome. That's my gift thank to you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, that's an interesting word choice. You're supposed to say, like, rogue with the street, you know? I don't think he knows who the X-Men are. Well, he didn't kill the baby, so. Thank this God. This is good. It was a much more ponderous ending than the first episode, which ended with, Wah! Yeah, yeah, we got some <laughs> variety. It's very nice, very nice. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. What's that mm-hmm about? I am trying to remember plot points from the movie. Okay. And I can't. All right. <laughs> like, I literally was like, I've, se I've seen the movie. Okay, so, like, where is this going? And I was like... I don't fucking know. I would bet not very much like the movie at all. Yeah, I, I'm sure it's going to be different, 100%. And um, They'll probably, I'm assuming, have the Kristen Dunst character. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Who I, I keep thinking is Drew Barrymore, but is absolutely Kristen Dunst. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dunst. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's it's so interesting, right? I think that this episode... Yeah, yeah, the, the first episode had something that I think a lot of period pieces do, which is... Um, have the like European white man not be as racist because he doesn't understand American racism. Uh, and so I appreciate that episode two dove into the reality of his misunderstanding a little bit more to make it a little bit more real yeah. and less of a trope. In yeah. fact, I think that a lot of what episode two did, uh, episode two did for episode one is um, ease up on the tropiness of like vampire stories, which 
uh, are tropes because Anne Rice created them, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, maybe not Anne Rice. I guess Bram Stoker probably created a lot of them. But the the kind of, like, the genteel, the, the, like, sexual, a, a lot of that, like, more modern vampire idea. Because in the original Bram Stoker, like, he, Dracula is such a just monster. Right, yes. And the, this kind of version of vampires came later, and Anne Rice was such a founder in that. Mm-hmm. And so those things feel like tropes now, and they didn't in the original writing. For sure. And so I think that episode two brings a lot of nuance and complexity to the story that they're telling. Absolutely. That updates Anne Rice's story in a way that I also think the first movie did. Um, sure, but this feels fresh. Oh, it's very fresh, right? yeah. It doesn't feel like, oh, vampires. You know what I mean? You know how we're getting to that point where we're like, oh, zombies, right? Like, <laughs> I never get that with zombies. I love zombie movies. I, I don't know, I guess. I also love vampire movies when the vampires are vampires. Yeah, and I think that that's a big part of it. But this mm-hmm. doesn't feel like, even though I have seen Interview with the Vampire, the movie, mm-hmm. this still feels... Yeah, fresh. Fresh is the best word that I can think to describe it. Um, it feels like it's important to now, um, which is interesting. Having said that, though, yeah. and I agree with you 100% mm-hmm. about what you just said, mm-hmm. I could do without the COVID-19 of it all. The, like, the pandemic is the perfect opportunity for the uprising of the vampire race, like, subplot is is... It's a little cringe. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's it's the, like, only thing about this show that I don't love. Yeah. Because right now, like, the relationship between Lestat and Louis, in, unreal. Both of those actors are giving wild performances. Um, the, the actress playing Louis, I, I need to remember his name because I know mm-hmm. it. But it, it, I can't pull it right now. Um, he, the, the version of Louis that he brings in the present day scenes is so changed from the version that he's playing in the past. Yeah. And sometimes yep. that can be really tough. Yeah. Especially in like episode two when you haven't been in the show for very long and you haven't really like set up those boundaries for yourself. Well, playing a character over any extended period of time always adds its own challenges, right? Because mm-hmm. you have to understand how people grow and change and react differently to things when, you know, you might not be... I mean, he's, he's like a young guy, right? Like he doesn't actually know what it feels like to be like a 65 year old Mm -hmm. retiree like with a family and stuff like that and obviously the vampireness of it all takes away certain elements of that but there's still that that weight Mm -hmm. right and that um that knowledge that that feeling of like you've seen things yeah which he's doing such a good job of the like Episode one, like pre being a vampire, mm-hmm. and and then the like newbie vampire mm-hmm. with all of its like what everything, all the baggage that comes with, and then we also get these jumps to the present day where he is this hundred year old being, right? And and he oh. feels very different, and he's made conscious decisions um, for each of those steps. And one of the things I'm most excited to see, honestly, is um, each of those steps and progressing along the way. Yeah, I agree with that. Um, I also think the show is doing a really good job of using the the stillness of scenes to help convey the and and, and especially in Louis's posture uh, to help convey the growth in the character. There's a lot of physical acting work, especially in this episode between last episode and this episode uh, in the actor playing Louis that is helping to sell time passing. Mm-hmm. Um, the 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 postural change when he first becomes a vampire and and the the very like hunched and like very forward almost leading with, like, the back of his throat. Yeah. Um, versus even six years later, where he's just, he's he's so, like, leading with, like, this sort of constant, just, just this constant battle against racism. And, and really, like, the struggle of being this superior creature in, in Lestat's eyes. Yeah. Uh, and versus being an, a black American at the time in this sort of socially relegated position. And the, the battle between those two things. That's why I said, during the reaction, like, the... This show, without the conversation about race that it is diving into, I, I don't know that I would need that remake of the movie. Yeah. I don't know that there would be any point to it other than to watch two men have sex with each other. Like, if you just wanted, like, a queer fantasia about two white men who become vampires and fuck all the time in New Orleans, that, that that's a show. Sure, and yeah. I have no I have no qualms with that. I would probably watch it and enjoy it very much. Uh, but this version of this is allowing them to make this show about something that makes it more than just a fun, hot, sexy vampire show. It has something to say. Yeah, and an important thing to say, right? Yeah. And so I... And, and I think that that's where, like, the, the COVID-19 stuff rubs me the wrong way, is that I'm like, you have this... You have this thing that you have something to say about in a really important way, 
and then like the COVID jokes just don't. The it, pandemic it's, stuff. It's a story about something else. Yeah, feels yeah. like I think the word is tertiary. Yeah. Is that, it, like yeah, you don't. It doesn't matter. It. You don't need it for this. It doesn't add anything. It's not important. Like I, I don't know why it's there. Well, and the, the jokes are weird, right? Like the, the the in the first episode, it was the um, the 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 parody of Masterclass. The parody that of Masterclass, started the show, yeah. which I was like, this is a weird tonal thing. The like flying on a plane in the middle of a pandemic when you're sick, like that. I didn't actually mind that 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 COVID nineteen thing. I don't mind. Like yeah. you're sick and it takes a lot to get you. That that scene I liked. It was this scene when he's like, "Oh yes, vampires view COVID nineteen as the perfect opportunity to make a lot of vampires." That yeah, was I where I was like, "Are is season two of the show in the present day and there's like a vampire ec- epidemic?" Like it just it felt like it felt like that hint of a new storyline was setting up this larger kind of like um the show I Zombie the CW show in like season four. The show is about how Seattle has been taken over by zombies, oh. right? And the show gets crazy. And yeah. it, the, in my opinion, the show kind of fell apart because the pers- – and I I love the first three seasons of the show a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, it introduced Rahul Cooley, who I think is just one of the best right, working right now. I'm so excited for his career with, like, um, what was it, Midnight Mass and everything that he's doing. But – once that show got away from, oh, it's a procedural show where this woman uses brains to solve crimes. Yeah. And it got into like, oh, there's a zombie apocalypse in Seattle and only Seattle. And now the zombies are trying to like start their own society. It became a show that was like so different in scope from what had been set up previously. Yeah. That I kind of lost interest in the main characters because they didn't seem as important to that plot. Yeah. my, my I don't want this show to become... We have to stop the epidemic of zombies attacking the globe because of COVID nineteen. Po- uh, uh, vampires. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. I understand what you're saying. <clears throat> it's just it it, it it was such a big idea to introduce in such a small way. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, they call it the Great um, well, Conversion, and I'm like, oh, is this show going to be about the Great? Is that is that what we're leading to? I don't know. I I I hope not. I hope that the COVID stuff is just a side. Uh, is just an aside. Mm-hmm. I hope that it's not a major plot point. To be honest. Because um, I think what the show is doing right now is fascinating and worth talking about. So, do, do you think Lestat? Do you think this is a multiple season show or is this a like one and done limited series? I don't know because I haven't. We haven't gotten there yet. Like I mm-hmm. like. I have I'm no not idea either. Sure. Yeah. In seven episodes, it's just it's interesting. The six the six year time jump is interesting because mm-hmm. I thought we were going to spend like all of season one in like New Orleans in this time period. And I'm starting to think that it's gonna be like 1955 pretty quick here. Yeah, you yeah, know? we're we're moving we're moving quick. We're gonna get into World War II pretty fast. Yeah, I'm so curious. I'm loving it. It's it's a little bit more contemplative in episode two than I thought. The end of episode one made me think there was going to be a lot more action in the show than yes, there is. Yes, because that was crazy. Um, uh, and I'm not gonna lie, the opera stuff made me physically uncomfortable because I've been in those rehearsals where they're like, no, it's this note, and you're like, okay, well, I'm trying to be like artistic about it, and like. <laughs> Let me bring something to it. And they're like, no, you're, you're flat. Not, and... You're not allowed to be artistic in opera. I know. I know. I know. It just, that was like my worst nightmare. And then to get murdered for giving a bad performance. Do you know how many bad performances I've given in my life? Like, can you imagine if yeah. us, you, someone got upset with you because you forgot the b- words at the beginning of the climactic song of Elf the Musical in Indianapolis at 10 o'clock in the morning? And so you did the three show day Very after you went on for Buddy and then your mom had flown all the way out to be in the audience, and the guy who you were understudying was in the audience because it was a three-show day, and the only reason he wasn't, he wasn't even sick, he was just out because they didn't want him to do all three, and so you forgot the words, and the whole show stopped well, for like six seconds, and then specific. a vampire sucks um, all the blood out of your body because of it? Yeah, that, that would suck. Page one, <laughs> fresh out of toys, I'll never forget those lyrics. Um, yep. That's not a true story at all. Uh, yeah, no, that was my worst nightmare. I was that seven years ago, and I remember that more vividly than any moment in my life. Oh, I believe you. I, I believe you. Are <laughs> you was, kidding? It was eight years ago. When I was 14, when we were doing the grandstand show, mm-hmm. I had these flowers on my hands. So basically there was like a bowl shaped like this with a flower on front, and it was like strapped to my hands. Mm-hmm. And my heel caught in the back of my skirt and pulled it down on stage. And so I'm trying to get my skirt up with my hand, like with these flowers. It was horrendous. And you know, the cameras are on the big cranes. It's like right there. And I'm like, <laughs> awful, horrendous. Never forget it. I managed to split my pants in a Christmas show 
and they were white pants, and I was wearing these like bright blue underwear. Well, that's your fault. And I ended up. Well, I, it's not my fault. The pants split. But I ended up performing like this children's show for this Christmas show for like this. It was the school bussin show. Show underwear. Where it was like elementary school kids. Show I only underwear. had one pair of show underwear and I was going to wear those for the night show. So I ended up, yeah, I, I like vividly remember Scott Morash looking at me and being like, you, you ripped your pants. I was like, I know I ripped my pants, but there's 20 more minutes on stage and I can't just leave. Yeah. Yeah. It's true. Oh, I know. Man. I remember every time I've ever messed up on stage, and I could not tell you what my like best performance was. You know what we should do? We should we should wrap this part up of the video because people are not here for our theater fail stories. But we should make that a separate video. What, how is that interested. our fault? They they showed this freaking opera singer. They gave us trauma. Oh my god! They, like the as show a, gave us trauma. As a, as a performer, that was like the that is the worst way to die. To have someone humiliate you for a bad show. And then slowly drink your blood while sucking your memories out of you. Like, yep. fuck off. Yep. Yep. Anyways. They got to the core of what I would hate more than anything in the world. They they saw you. <laughs> they saw you. Ah, ah, got it. Well, anyways, that's a good episode. I'm excited to see what the show does next. Gay people are so judgmental. Um. Yeah. <laughs> That's not that. That's not even a lie. Like that. Oh no, that's the realest shit ever. The 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 versions of murder that I have heard gay men say in musicals because someone was bad. Oh, yeah. I my oh my god. This this might be slightly too far. I was working for a company, and the like assistant director and choreographer for for the show I was in. We went and saw the show across the hall, which is still the same company, and those two talked so much shit to us about the other cast yeah, and the yeah, other yeah. show and I was like okay cool. you're like we're all we're all friends here we're they, great cool and it wasn't like constructive it was <clears> mean <throat> anyways don't be like that don't 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 be like we're gonna that. do it anyway uh wow this show's great it's really well made um it's 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 really well made I, I'm, yeah. I'm really impressed uh I the, can't imagine what the dry cleaning budget on it is <laughs> but uh you know other than that uh, they they did, they've done a great job. I love all the actors. I thought uh, Louis's relationship with his sister was really um, interesting this episode, mm -hmm. and um, I'm just really glad he didn't kill the baby because I don't know if I could have ever liked him again. Yeah, I think him, the him and his sister. There's gonna be some issues. Uh, I don't know if she's gonna be alive next. It could be 30 years later. That's gonna be true. like, and then in 1962. We'll find out next time. <laughs> if you like this video, like and subscribe to the channel. If you don't, hit the dislike button. Leave mean comments down below because the algorithm god, she's hungry and we must feed her. The algorithm goddess in this episode, of course, is the tenor. Very hungry, sitting there having his blood drained the entire time. She's like, I'm starving. I was please. Gonna, I was gonna go with the soprano because now she doesn't have a tenor, so. She's hungry for a tenor, I guess. Most Sopranos are hungry for a tenor. Uh, if you want to follow us around the internet, you can. I'm at Nerdy Nightly. I'm at Clarice Polaris. If, you really, if you're like a 16-year-old guy and you can sing high and you want to get laid, join the theater program. True. Uh, follow us around the internet, and as always, do something nerdy tonight. Bye, guys. <laughs> oh, oh, wow. Oh.